Today on the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast, the role of the nursing home attending physician. Stick around. The Nursing Home Abuse Podcast is dedicated to providing news and information for families whose loved ones have been injured in a nursing home. Here are your hosts, Georgia attorneys Rob Schenk and Will Smith. Hello out there. Welcome back to the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. My name is Rob. And I'm Will Smith. All right. I have pulled Will back into uh, the the studio, so to speak, for this week's episode. We're going to be talking all about the role of the nursing home attending physician. But before we get into it, if you are enjoying the content of these episodes, please be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a review if you are so inclined. Go to our YouTube channel, Nursing Home Abuse Podcast, on YouTube. Leave a comment there. Hit the notification bell. With that, let's get into it. Will, it's it's wild to have you back. It's almost like I think you were here last month, right. uh, and so we're, we're pulling you back for your expertise. Um, this week, we're talking about the nursing home attending physician. So, in a nursing home. We, you know, we have several roles. Um, we've actually, if you're interested, there is an episode be, because Will worked in a nursing home for over 10 years. We had an episode dedicated to um, what the role of each person is, but I don't think we really got to the attending physician. But the attending physician's role is pretty much outlined in our federal regulations. Um, that is 42 CFR 483.30 Physician Services. Um, and those provide the obligations and guidelines for attending physicians. Um, essentially, it comes down to this. Every nursing home resident needs to be under the care of a medical doctor, not a nurse practitioner, not a registered nurse, not a CNA. The overall care should be supervised by, by a doctor. Um, so the nursing home attending physician, and Will, you correct me if I'm wrong, but um, oftentimes it kind of is baked into the cake. Like the attending physician, uh, they've, got their, they've got a nursing home and they see everybody at that nursing home as opposed to everybody has to fend for themselves, right? Oh, yeah. Like you, what you'll notice is, because I noticed this in our cases, which are all over the state of Georgia is that you will see a lot of the same names of physicians because these nursing home attending physicians uh, have a multitude of, of residents. So they'll, they'll, you know, they'll take care of almost an entire nursing home or, or more, several nursing homes. That's right. So the, if you're a resident in a nursing home, you're essentially assigned a attending physician. I mean, obviously you have the right, you're, you have the right as a resident, you can, you can have your own primary care physician if you want to, but um, unless you do that, the nursing home is essentially going to provide one. And this is something that's different than um, a medical director. I'm, the attending physician is actually somebody that um, is putting hands on the resident and diagnosing them and treating them. So um, that is what the nursing home attending physician does, supervises care, provides physician's orders for treatments and sees the resident. So um, what, how frequently does the nursing home attending physician need to visit the resident? That answer to that is actually also in the federal regulations. Within the first 30 days of admission to that nursing home, the attending physician needs to lay eyes on that resident. It's a non-negotiable. The, the, because the reason why that's so important is because the attending physician is a part of the interdisciplinary um, care team, which is they do the assessment and create the care plan. So the attending physician having to be there within the first 30 days, that's critical to that process. Um, and then the attending physician must visit that resident every 30 days for the first 90 days. So um, states are different with regard to after that first initial visit, 
whether or not it has to actually be the attending physician and not a nurse practitioner or not whatever the nurse practitioner equivalent is in your state. In the state of Georgia, um, the regulations, the Georgia regulations seem to suggest that the attending physician must also do the first couple of visits and they cannot delegate their duty. But depending on what state you're in, the attending physician can, once they've done that first initial assessment, can delegate if the medical condition of the resident warrants it to a nurse practitioner. Um, Will, in your experience, like, did you often see the physician um, or was it like a nurse practitioner? Do you, like, was that? Uh, so my experience is that no, I, I would rarely see the doctor. Now, I, I don't want to blame the doctors too much because I had a very sporadic schedule. I would tend to work, um, you know, two months in the summer and maybe I was missing them. Uh, but I, I generally think that uh, they're really not, they're not there that much. Right. I, I don't know if it's, if it's, I don't know what the cause of it is. I mean, certainly, like I said earlier, they have a lot of, of nursing home residents. It's, it's not uncommon for them to have over a hundred um, or more. Um, but, you know, I mean, basically what they're doing when they do come in is a lot of times they're just going through the chart. Um, back when I was doing it, cause I'm very old, uh, we didn't have, electronic records so they would they would pick these physical charts up and they would flip through them they'd ask questions of the the nurse you know how is she doing on this let me see maybe i should take her off this or i'll do this and then you know they they might talk with the resident uh if 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 they could you know if, if the resident's mental uh state would allow them to answer questions but yeah i didn't really see them that much to be honest um and we mentioned that the, the the physician needs to visit every 30 days for the first 90 days. But after that, as Will mentioned, you can go long periods of time without seeing them. But under the regulations, it needs oh, yeah. to be once every 60 days. So if, the, if your loved one has been in a nursing home for longer than 90 days, it's once every 60 days is required. Although that's the minimum threshold. It can be more often than that. But as Will mentioned, it's, it's likely not. And we have several cases in which the a physician never saw the resident. It was always a nurse practitioner, which again, in the state of Georgia is against the law. Yeah. Um, so what are the duties of the attending physician? So obviously the attending physician is there to assess and diagnose and um, provide what's called physician's orders, meaning that by way of example, if like if the resident has a pressure injury, the the physician might say, okay, well, we need to put some type of cream on there. This is how often you bandage it, that type of thing. And that order stays at the nursing home and is followed by the, um, the staff there. Um, the physician is also required for each visit, required to provide progress notes. Um, so that way staff can understand, you know, what's going on and there's a record because, you know, if you're only going once every 60 days, how do you supposed to remember this kind of stuff? Um, the other, the other duty is the attending physician or any physician, there needs to be, there needs to be 24 hour emergency access to that physician. And, and Will, you can speak to this about, you know, if something happens at two in the morning, they need the, the, a, a nurse or the CNA needs to be able to contact somebody to know what to do. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to bat. I have plenty of friends who are doctors and they're amazing doctors. There's always bad apples in, in, you know, any arena lawyers certainly uh, have their issues, uh, nurses as well. But this is something that my brother Clay talks about a lot um, because my brother Clay is, you know, not only a grown man and a former uh, military, you know, uh, medic uh, in the army, uh, but he's just, his personality is he's, he's somebody that isn't easily startled or frightened. So uh, a lot of times doctors get mad at nurses when they call them for emergencies or there's some pushback and, and nurses will feel uncomfortable. They don't want to call them because doctors essentially are the boss. They're, they're the person at the very top of the food chain that all orders trickle down from. 
Um, so to the extent that you're supposed to call them for an emergency, I know my brother talks about this all the time. He's had doctors get mad and say, well, why are you calling me? And he has to set them straight and go, well, I mean, if I don't, this person could die. And then you're on the hook as well as the hospital for the malpractice. Yeah. I'm sure they love that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, and that's, and that's, um, that's some of the issues that, that, that we see in our cases. Um, is that you have a significant change in condition of the resident. The nurse contacts um, nobody most of the time, but when they do contact the physician, the physician's like, give them some aspirin. Yeah. Um, and there's either miscommunication or no communication or no follow through with the physician. Um, I've seen cases where they fax the significant change into the physician and the physician doesn't get the fax or vice versa. The, the physician's order gets faxed to the facility and it, there's no ink in the fax machine. Yeah. And, and, and I know I, I just uh, talked uh, negatively about doctors, but I can say that my experience, which is just anecdotal, is, is that it's more often than not the facility that is not communicating properly with the physician. The physician doesn't know that uh, the, that the resident's you know, blood pressure has spiked or has dropped or their respirations have changed dramatically or, hey, you know, this physician wasn't aware that because um, he hasn't been there you know, in, in 30 days that this bed sore has gone from stage two to stage one. So I, I don't want to put it all on the physician. It's certainly incumbent upon, like, like you said, the facility to make sure the physician knows, did you get the facts, right? Did you that's, get the phone call? That's correct. And not only did you get the facts, F-A-X, did you get the facts, F-A-C-T-S, in terms of have you, like, here are accurate nurse notes that you can look at as you diagnose this particular resident. Because, I mean, like, that's another problem, too, is like, well, nobody told me that he was lethargic for the past three days. And when I came to him, he was lucid for the five minutes that I was there. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely imperative that the, the entire interdisciplinary team is doing their job. So everybody from the CNAs to dietary, if they're not accurately assessing and accurately documenting, then when this doctor comes in to look at these notes, you know, she doesn't know that, that these are not accurate notes. She doesn't know that, that their, their uh, fluid intake has decreased. She's relying on the staff to give her the information she needs. And all too often, that's not the case. They're not accurately documented. That's right. And so the, the, the main point that I would like our audience to take away today is to understand that there should be a physician overseeing the care and that their visits should be um, periodic. They're more, more often at the beginning, not as much afterwards. They can, if they, cho they choose, delegate that task to nurse practitioners down the line, but that does not um, abrogate the duties that the physician has to make sure the, the resident is being taken care of. But to that, I would say this, ask when the next care plan meeting is, and also ask when is the physician scheduled to come and visit again and be there for that. Be there with the physician when they are doing a head-to-toe um, assessment of your loved one. Um, you're allowed to do that if you're the appropriate um, individual personal representative. But I would say that the more you uh, the more you are involved, the more you know people's names, like, oh, it's Dr. Johnson, like he's here today, blah, 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 the, the more likely it is that your loved one is not going to fall through the cracks. Yeah, it, it's, I, I hate saying this, but I tell, you know, I have friends call me all the time um, uh, about loved ones in nursing homes and just making sure that nothing bad happens to them. And, and I hate saying it, but it's true. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So the more you're involved with their care, the more that, that, that the, the team knows that you're involved and that you want to be kept informed, the better care that your loved one's going to get. Is, should it be that way? No, everybody should get phenomenal the same phenomenal care but you know unfortunately they they clearly don't and that in and to that point we've had episodes about attending care plan meetings we've had episodes about how to get medical records we've had episodes about how to read medical records 
kind of a, a point I want to highlight for this episode is when you do get the medical records, when you do get the care plan or the, you, you do get the chart because you want to be informed as Will said, that's one of the first places that you want to go to. Um, you want to go to the care plan first, but then you want to go to physician's orders because all too often our clients come in the door and say our loved one should have been getting their bandages changed. And they said, no, that's not what the doctor wanted. Or um, I didn't understand why they were getting this medicine. And they said the doctor said they wanted it. And I, the last time I said, saw the doctor, they said didn't want it or whatever the case may be. There's confusion about what the doctor wants. So when you get the chart, when you ask to see the records and you get them, go to the physician's orders yeah. and read the physician's orders. They, remember that to a large extent, the physician's orders should be in a language that a CNA can understand, which means that it's pretty close to layman's terms. Oh, absolutely. Um, so it, if, if the physician's order is for a bandage to be changed um, three times a day or whatever the case, three times a week, whatever the case may be, look and see, verify that. And so that way, if you get any pushback from the staff, you, you can say, hey, here, I'm holding up the physician's order. Why aren't you doing this? So that's, that's a recommendation. Not only just, not only be there when the physician's there, but get a hold of the physician's orders. And, and I think that we talked about this uh, the last time uh, that I was on when we were talking about incontinence, just knowing the side effects of different medications. So talk with a physician. You have every right to do that. Uh, this, this physician is, is your loved one's doctor. So ask them, you know, what are the side effects? Are, are, are there things that we need to look out for? You know, for example, are they on pain medicine that might cause uh, constipation? Is that going to be an issue? What should the staff do? Get involved. That's right. It's almost like um, if you've ever seen any commercial for medication in the past 35 years, there's that litany of like, you know, this may cause loose stools, diarrhea, blah, 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 blah. Um, you want that explained to you by that physician, but slower. Yeah. So what are, what are we looking at here? What, because you're giving my mother this, these medications, what are the side effects going to be? What are the common side effects? And, um, you know, what does the staff need to do? What do we need to do? You know, that's right. So that hopefully answers some of your questions about who an attending physician is, who they, who they are in the hierarchy of care and how often you should be seeing them uh, with regard to caring for your loved one. If you are enjoying the content of these episodes, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. Then go over to our YouTube channel at Nursing Home Beast Podcast um, on YouTube. I can't remember what our short URL is, but at any rate, if you just knew yeah. Nursing Home yeah, something, go like and subscribe there, leave a comment. If you have a suggestion for something that you want us to talk about, let us know, shoot us an email or hit us up wherever you get your podcast from and new episodes every other week on Mondays. And with that, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the nursing home abuse podcast. Nothing said on this podcast, either by the host or the guest should be construed as legal advice, nor is intended to create an attorney client relationship between the host or their guest and the listener. New episodes are available every Monday on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube and our website, nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. Again, that's nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. See you next time.